Okay, as we continue to build shapes, if I look at my title, I realize this is still a JPEG image. It's still titled the way my reference image is. So before I do anything else, I want to go to File, Save As. And as we do in this class, I want to rename it with my name and a description. So this is Exercise 2 Shape-Based Composition, something like that. I want to save it to the desktop. If it's navigating anywhere else, you just hit Command D. And I want it to stay a Photoshop format, a PSD. I don't type that in. I let the computer fill that in. I save that, and I can see it then on the desktop, saved. And that way, if my computer shuts down, it has all of this work. It has all of these layers that I've already built to work with. All right, so, so far, if I hit Command-0 in Photoshop, I can see the whole thing on the screen. I can turn off the background copy that is only at 20% or, I guess, 35% opacity at the very top. It shows me what I still have left to do. And I realize that this is working pretty well, but it's missing some major things. The necklace is really important for breaking up that space. Um, this hand is obviously pretty important. The weasel is pretty important. And that kind of hard edge there is pretty important. So all of these are important things. And I'm gonna, going to try to finish it off in the next 15 minutes or so and just get those most important things taken care of. So the, the parts of the assignment that might be scaring you or that you're avoiding, you just want to be able to tackle head on at this point. I have a slight little bobble in that edge, which isn't helpful. So I'm going to do that with a new shape. with a rectangle, and then the color for that is going to be black. Click Transform, bring that in, and then I can warp it and just smooth out that sleeve. All right, so lots of tricks we have. What about this? Well, same thing. I can take a rectangle, can trans or rotate it, transform it, warp it a little bit. It's curving down. Make sure it fills behind the hand and behind the, uh, the ermine. You can even push it into this shadow here because it's going to be a pretty dark fill color. So as long as I'm not twisting this warp a lot of different ways, the warp tool can be incredibly effective. And then what's a good color for it? Well, maybe something like this. Something fairly dark. All right, now let's see what I've got. Okay, making some progress. What else do I need? So the hand, I'm gonna actually build the hand with another rectangle. So there's a lot of ovals on this side and this gets more and more kind of uh, strong linear shapes. And I'm just gonna use, instead of warp, which I've been using over and over, I wanna show you what distort does. Distort's really good if you want to keep the edges nice and sharp. You can just move the angles of your shape to different places. Right? And then I might warp and curve them out a little bit. Skew does the same thing in a slightly more limited way. It locks more points than Distort does. All of those transform tools I want you to really be able to play with. And then I got to pick a color. I'll go ahead and pick kind of a skin tone color, maybe a shadow skin tone. Then I go to the old ellipse. Very nice for organic forms like this portrait. Transform them. 
Get the little knuckle in there. Warp it. The delicate placement of the hand is really important to this. I'm going to duplicate that with Command J and then transform that and turn that into the wrist as well. Again, Leonardo used the same shapes over and over again. Gives kind of a harmony to the composition. Can use the arrow keys to nudge them into place. Okay, let's see what I've got. Not too bad. Now the fingers. I'm going to go back to this little shape and duplicate that. Remember, they're all the same color, so they're just making one bigger shape. Command T, stretch that out. I get the digit and then warp it to slim it. Nip and tuck. Try to get the elegance of that finger. And then Command J again, transform. Leonardo used the same shapes over and over. Warp it, stretch it, refine it, not going for perfection. Leonardo took more than an hour to do his painting. You can duplicate that, transform it, bring that down for this fingertip, rotate it. Remember, all of these shapes are at 100%. The reason they look transparent is because I have that overlay of the background copy on top. So just Command J. It can go pretty fast those fingers in there. And at last the pinky. Going back to a regular ellipse. Because if you just uh, duplicate too much, it starts to look what I call copy pasty. It's good to rebuild every once in a while. Command J, T, Command T. J, Command T. Warp. I can bow this back. There we go. Soften that transition. Command J, Command T. Let's bring that into this as well. The fun of digital art is often this kind of problem solving. So I hope it can be enjoyable for you. But even if it's just the most tedious thing you've ever done, we are practicing some new skills that are going to help us with our creative work later. All right. 
Let's see how that hand works. It works okay. Now we need the weasel. So I'm going to do an oval. I'm just going to make it white for now. Transform it, warp it, because it's very curvy. See kind of the closest shape I can get for the head. And now the body. What's funny about this ermine is just how muscular it is. <laughs> But what's fun about it is I can just push it now underneath the hand. I just keep building. I'm going to duplicate that to transform it. Lower body, which is darker for sure. Warp it. But I can always change the color. All right. And now I'm going to duplicate that transform it, make it a lot smaller, and use this as the little muscular leg. Again, a repetition of forms, very helpful. Then I'm going to rep duplicate that, and use that again as the paw. And stretch it out. Warp it. I need to zoom in a little, Command Plus. And you notice I'm not being as exacting as I was doing the main focal points of the piece the hairline and the head. All right. So the main things that are missing, because all of this is in shadow anyway, I'm just going to do a big oval here that I'll make nice and dark. Then I push behind almost everything else. I warp and stretch and I fill out the rest of this dress. And I'll round out that arm. And then I just have to keep lowering it through. My layers. Good. Next, I need the necklace and the hair at the back. So I take just a rectangle, nice and dark. I warp it with Command T, get a little bit of that curve, but I don't need. It's just the outside one I'm worried about because the neck curve is already set. 
Now I just need to move. 